Hey you guys, Brandon with Fold Up Games here. How the heck are you doing? All right, enough chit chat. Let's get right to it. You saw the label and uh, we're gonna try to make a quick tutorial on how to use Blender for Unity. And go. <laughs> Here's Blender. Hey, if you didn't already uh, download it, I don't know what you're doing with your life. It's at blender.org. Uh, don't you hate it when people go through instructions on how to download something, you're sitting there looking at it. Uh, you should be following along with me at home right now. Uh, if you've got two monitors, that would really help. Sure. Um, first and foremost, let's address the elephant in the room. It's very, very, very important that you know this one right off the bat. Blender is a right-handed coordinate system. That means that Z is up and Y is forward. I am so sorry about that. Um, nothing to be done about it. It's just the way it was built in the first place. It had a lot of good reasons, and I won't get into it right now. But... Uh, y is forward and Z is up. There, there really is no fixing that. You will have to compensate for it and just get used to it. Or, I don't know, work top down and you'll feel a lot better about yourself. Um, so, uh, that's just the way it is. Um, boom, boom, boom. Let's do some inputs right here. And um, if you don't have a full number pad, it will slow you down a smidge, but we can emulate that. If you don't have a mouse where you can middle click with a mouse, that will slow you down. We can emulate that too. Couple things up here is this uh, right hand gizmo you can use to rotate around right there. You just click and drag on it. If you're not doing that, click down on your middle mouse button and rotate around. If you don't have either of those settings and you don't wanna do it that way, edit preferences are your friends. Input, behold, we can emulate the numpad and we can emulate a three button mouse. So, if anything I'm saying right now does not click with you, there you go, there's your settings. You ought to be aware that you can customize the heck out of Blender. So if you don't like something, you can customize it. Except for the right-handed coordinate system. <laughs> Believe me, I've looked at it. Um, but anyway, so click with your middle mouse button and just move around and orbit around. Do that maneuver right there about 5,000 times until you get the hang of it. Um, <laughs> add in the shift key. Sorry, there we go. Yeah, there we go. The shift key and do that at the same time and you'll be dragging around. You could also use any of these buttons up here. This is not a tool, this hand button. We don't click it and we're using the hand tool. Click and hold it and you are dragging right there, okay? You got me? All good? So those are the first couple maneuvers I want you to try out and it takes a little bit of getting used to. Um, feels a little bit different than Unity, I'm sure. Mouse wheel in and out. Zoomity, 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 zoomity. Very fun, very fun. Um, now, let's go ahead and get a quick look at the overall Blender universe here. And I'm going to let you know that there's a ton of stuff that Blender can do because it is a fully featured animation, um, texturing, uh, fluid simulations. It's actually got a video editor built into Blender. There's five billion things that you may or may not need. Um, I can't possibly show you all of them, but I wanted to show you a couple of them that might be helpful just for you to get your feet wet, uh, just for you to get your feet wet with Blender, uh, which is what you should be doing here with this video. It's just getting a crash course on how to get going. Um, this is the scene collections area. It's kind of a folder section. Really, really handy, really helpful. You can add more folders to it, um, more of these uh, asset collections. Um, down here on the right, this is a context sensitive menu. Really neat, really neat. Um, it takes all the menus that other, other 3D software applications would probably want to have all that stuff popping out all the time. <laughs> I'm looking at you, 3D Studio Max. Um, and instead, it, we, we dock them all to this little handy little sidebar area. Very, very helpful. Um, we have stuff for rendering that you're not going to care about because you're using this for Unity. Unity is going to be your rendering. So your output and rendering and all that stuff. There's a lot in here you don't need to worry about too much. A um, couple of the areas you might want to care about. Modifiers. Modifiers are really, really helpful. So um, we're not going to get into a ton of it, but it's a great way to interact with uh, objects uh, and uh, do some more fancy pants stuff. Um, yeah, that's one of the ones I want you to be aware of. It's where's the, uh, as well as the materials. You can make materials on a lot of the settings that you make in materials are going to be honored over in Unity, uh, particularly if you get into more uh, UV projection and painting textures and things. I cannot get into that in this video, and I'm also not very good at it. Uh, but <laughs> as I've suggested in Fenzia before, look at him. He has some tutorials on specifically on that topic. I'm going to look more at modeling today, okay? Walk the cat, walk to the modeling. Okay, not that kind of modeling. All right, so you notice when we click on the object, it lights up. That's exciting, very exciting, 
very, very, very exciting. Um, we can get in there and edit it because we are working in a mesh mode right now. That means we can we can edit those individual vertices. Very cool. Blender has lots of different modes, like working with curvatures and things, which is really neat. Um, but one of the default, getting, getting right down into the uh, object is gonna be that mesh modeling. So if we go up here to object mode, we can change to edit mode. Those are the two you're gonna need all the time. But in order to speed your life up, just hit tab boop, and go back and forth. Boop. Boopity boopity boopity, do that with me. I want you to follow along with me at home, okay? So when you're in edit mode, you can see the interface changes and all the sidebar changes over here too. You've got all these tools over here for you to move things around if we're not in edit mode. Move things, box select things, rotate things. It's a lot handier just to learn a few key shortcuts here in Blender. So that's the first one I wanted to show you is tabbing in and out of edit mode. The other one I'd like to show you is how to G to grab. This is gonna be your QWERTY keys over in Unity, uh, but G to grab, you can move around, okay? Now, the cool thing is any of these moves you're doing, you can also hit X, Y, or Z to lock it into that coordinate. So if I hit G to just freely grab and then I hit Z, I'm now locking it into Blender's up, down, Z, or Y, it's forward and back, Z, or X, it's left and right. I'll undo that, or I hit grab and then I'll hit Shift Z, so it's moving everything but Z. That's kind of cool. That's really helpful. So now we can move it along the ground plane, but not in the Z coordinate. Um, that's really neat. Another quick shortcut to use is rotate. All this stuff is over here. Um, you can see the shortcut right there. Shortcuts, shift space bar, R. We can just hit R, rotate, yay, rotate freely. Or again, we could hit X, Y, or Z. Rotate X, look at that. I want you to notice over here, this little uh, item panel, this transform panel is showing you stuff. You can use this panel as well for numeric. That's probably familiar to you over in Unity because you have the inspector window with all the transforms. That works here too. Very cool. So we can grab it. We can rotate it. We could also hit S to scale it or we could come over here and you know, there it is. I don't want you to get too confused with shortcuts. If you watch any tutorials in Blender, uh, people, are, people are mad for shortcuts. Uh, I actually want to address that one really, really fast. People are mad for shortcuts in Blender because as somebody who is at a level where they can teach you things, they've been using Blender for a long time, so using those shortcuts is the most familiar thing for them. You're not going to get you know, lessons in Blender from somebody who just started and is having to click on menus. When you've been using the shortcuts for so long, you literally forget where the tools are. Um, also, because Blender is so darn complicated and there's so many bits and pieces and things you can do, it would take you forever to dig through all the menus. So learning just a few key shortcuts is, is a really big time saver. So I'm going to try to show you where things are in the menus um, so that you don't feel overwhelmed with shortcuts. But if you do watch some other videos and people are just control shift A and alt B and all that, I'd like to apologize in advance. Uh, they might be teaching a more advanced crowd that doesn't want to dig through menus and the more advanced crowd is expecting those shortcuts. So Anyway, for a beginner tutorial, let's not let's not do that though. Okay. <clears throat> All right. What are we doing? Uh, we're going to we're going to scale this guy up and down. Great. Uh, let's go into the edit mode because that's where you're actually going to start working on stuff. If you've imported anything, uh, really great. You can hit file import and import tons of different files. So if you've already got some FBX files or if you download STL files or anything like that, you can come in here and edit them in Blender. Very handy. Tab, what I just do? Tab, tab it in, tab it out, right? So now on the top left up here, you'll notice that you've got three different edit modes. That might look a little hidden up there, but there are three different edit modes. We can in individually select individual vertexes. We can do the edges or we can do the faces. You can go up there and click those if you want to. I, I do that all the time, actually. Or when you're in edit mode, you can quickly, quickly hit one, two, three to switch which mode you're in. Um, half the time I just stick with vertex select anyway. But let's switch over to this face select mode and you notice they're all highlighted right now in edit mode. I'm gonna click off of it and we'll click a face. And then using the shortcut I just showed you a second ago, it's that grab tool. See, it's, it's G, we're gonna grab it and then I will isolate it along Y by clicking Y. Now we're just moving along Y. Cool, huh? Boop. Let's do some more stuff. We're gonna grab that guy and I'm going to extrude it. There's all these tools on the left. Go ahead and just fiddle with these. You're not gonna break anything. You'll find them to be a lot of fun, like beveling, for example, or a loop cut. These are all great tools to be using. Um, I tend to use the shortcuts all the time. 
as I just uh, mentioned to you, I'll, I'll try to show you over here on the sidebar. So let's extrude this guy. And by default, it's gonna try to extrude it up in the Z coordinate because it knows that's where it's going. And you can see the little tool on screen is highlighted with a blue line up there. Very nice, good. We're all off in weird directions here. So let's go ahead and use our number pad to get into the view we want. If you don't have a number pad, remember I showed you where the number pad emulation is, or we can use this tool up here and just click on things too. But the number pad is helpful to change your view. You hit one on your number pad to go to the front view. And we can see right there at the top left, it says you're in front orthographic. We hit three and we're on the side. We can hit seven, we're on the top. Five is gonna switch us back and forth between orthographic and perspective view. You got the same thing over in Unity. You know, when you click that little, little um, the, the camera, I believe it's under it. Yeah, it says perspective or orthographic. Kind of the same concept here. Very, very similar. So you ought to feel some familiarity. It's actually just enough. It's it's just enough to throw you off sometimes because you come over to Blender and you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Things are similar enough, but not <laughs> just enough to kind of weird me out. So anyway, let's just, let's see if we can get some comfort here. And the best way to get comfortable with Blender is to keep doing these basic movements I'm showing you and just... Tab in, tab out, move around, move around. Okay, we're, we're gonna take it slow here. Okay, so we're gonna we're still in face select here. Might as well keep with it. And I'm going to do another extrude out there. That's great. And I'm gonna do a bevel here just because it's fun. Control B is the shortcut. You can see it right there. Or I could just click it and I'm using it more like a bevel tool and I can grab it. And we just do a little bevel there. You see that? Kind of fun, huh? Um, I usually tend to stay in the selection box. That allows me just to drag a selection box like that. And you'll notice it's solid, so we're not selecting through it. If I go to vertex select and you mean to select all the way through with a box select, it will not do it because <laughs> you're not actually uh, seeing through it. Uh, we can switch our modes though and we can see through it up here at the top right, like that. So now we're more of an X-ray mode. A quick shortcut for that is to hit Z on your keyboard and it pops out this little flywheel, which is, I think, a lot of fun. I really like doing that. Woof, woof, woof. Look at that. Do that so fast you don't even you don't even see it. But you can see up here it does change. Um, another thing you can do is this little guy right here, the toggle X-ray. Alt-Z if you want to know the shortcut. Alt-Z. So you're still in kind of a solid mode, but you can see through it. That way you can intentionally select all the way through. See what I mean? So that's pretty helpful. That is pretty helpful. Um, let's do a few more moves here. Uh, let's do, let's let's merge some vertexes together and we're gonna delete some vertices. Vertices, vertexes, I always say it wrong. Vertices and we'll fill some faces. This is just general damage repair that you might have to do with a model that you've imported. So let's go ahead and we'll click this guy and we will shift click the, the next one to get them both and I'm gonna right click and we're going to merge them. So we'll slide down here and it says merge. There's a lot of interesting stuff in the pop out. We will merge them and we'll merge them at the last vertex we clicked. Boop, there it is. Now we got a weird twisted face there. We don't want that. We'll click that and we'll shift click the next one. Right click again, merge them at the last point. You've probably gone off already doing your own thing because you've already gotten the hang of it and that's fine. I'm just gonna keep on messing around with things. We're gonna do some basic moving around of faces. This is so that you just get kind of comfortable with what we're doing. If you are watching any of Infenzia's uh, content, you'll see him doing a ton of stuff like this, but he's doing it really, really fast. So hopefully this will allow you to kind of catch up slowly and then get more value out of other tutorials that you're doing. Uh, we'll grab this one. I'm gonna hit three on the number pad to go to the side view. G to grab it and Z to lock it in that direction. And we can slide it up. You see how easy that was? So we can start to manufacture something here. So let's say we were making some sort of a weird, I don't know, like an alien gun and we wanted another cut in here. We could use a loop cut tool for that. I like to use the control R for the shortcut on it, but there's the tool right there. Right there's your tool. So I'm gonna hit control R and there we go. We're gonna do a loop cut. It's gonna try to add some more geometry to it. And I can use my scroll wheel while I'm doing this to add more subdivisions. Very, very helpful. I'll click it. Now I've got that loop cut and it's saying, okay, where would you like it? And I'm just sliding along here. I'll hold it right there and I'll confirm it. I'm gonna hit three to go to the side view. I don't like the way this uh, zigzag. So I'm gonna hit S and I'm now scaling these individual, con these individual points, scaling them along the Y axis by hitting S to scale it and then Y to lock it along the Y axis. And I'll just scale them all solid. Do it again, just to make sure. I can G to grab those control points along the 
Y axis by just clicking it. We're doing the same things over and over again. So I'll go ahead and lock that there. Let's do another, let's do another. Boop, loop cut with control R, slide it into place, and I will scale with S along the Y axis, Y, scale, Y, scale, Y. We could, of course, use our scale tools and everything here. And these tools do the same thing, scaling along that axis, which won't do anything because, there we go. <laughs> it's hard to scale a line any, any further. As you see, it's barely moving because it's a line. Um, <laughs> but anyway, you can use these tools along the side if you're not comfortable with the shortcuts. They're sitting right there and happy for you to use them. We'll go to this face right here. We'll grab that face and I will E to extrude it or come down here and hit E to extrude. Boom, right there. Either way you go about it, either way you go about it. So you can start to manufacture stuff the way you want to. Okay, you got the idea. That's some basic vertex and faces and edges and mesh modeling. We'll delete that with the delete key. Um, we can add more objects by hitting add, add what kind of object. This is where I said uh, Blender can do a ton of different stuff. You can make an ar armature for a character, you know, and do all the rigging and stuff with an armature. You could do curves and do more um, Bezier type modeling. Uh, but usually what you're going to want to do is your, your basic mesh modeling so you really get control over those individual vertices and keep that poly count where you want it. So I can say add another cube right where the one was that I deleted it. I'll grab it along the Z axis. And now I'll use a shortcut this time. I'll hit Shift A, mesh, and I'll add a cylinder. Cool thing I want you to look at here is the bottom left. Some of these objects, when you add them, you've got a moment to make some real fundamental changes to them, like the vertex count. I can enter that numerically, or I can literally slide up and down just by dragging and sliding. You can do a lot of that stuff over in Unity as well, so it ought to feel familiar to you. But let's say we wanted 64, and there we go. So we just created a cylinder with 64 sides. Pretty handy. Um, one more thing I wanted to show you before we move into an, another another area of it. I wanted to show you those actions with the with the modifiers, because this can be a really, really helpful way to do some more complicated modeling. Uh, let's scale with the, with the scale tool or to hit S, and I will lock it to the Z coordinate by hitting Z. I'll scale that up. And now let's say I wanted to scale the whole thing down like that. I will rotate along the X axis by hitting R to rotate, X on the X axis, and I can actually punch in some numbers right now. 90, boop. Over here, you can see that's all changed as well. We can do that numerically. Now we can go to the side view. Let me see, I'll just grab this in a freeform kind of way and I will shift click that box. We'll grab that in a freeform kind of way. Let's say we went to the modifiers panel, that little wrench looking guy here, and we added one of my favorite modifiers is gonna be uh, the Booleans because they allow you to add and subtract and build. So uh, let's try a Boolean difference on that. That should cut out something out of it. So we'll take this guy, um, let's apply it. Right now it's a modifier, so it's not actually live. And we could still make some changes to this right now, like inset. We'll drop down that arrow, that little chevron. We'll apply the change and we can delete the original cylinder because now we have this shape, a cube with a little hole cut out of it. Cool, huh? Uh, cool, let's do, 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 do. Let's do some materials real fast. Um, before I do that, I do want to, I do want to point out, like I said, there's a zillion different, um, there's a zillion different things that Blender can do. I want you to be aware of the, the width and the depth of the program without having to be overwhelmed by everything that it can do, because there's a ton of stuff that you might not really need since you're taking models over into Unity. You might need to learn animation. You might want to learn a few things about, uh, you know, texture painting and things of that nature. Um, you might want to utilize the sculpting tools because it's a really convenient way to, to work on things. So I want to give you a quick overview of where some of the other tools are real quick. Uh, and then we'll, we'll try to wrap up with a couple of materials, all right? So up here at the top, there are a bunch of predefined workspaces for different things. And uh, like I said, Blender can be customized all to death. So you can, you can make the interface be whatever you want it to be whatever you want it to be. When it's got this tab up here that says layout, that's just a default predefined you know, setup. But I, I can come over here and let's say I'll right click between these two and I'll say I'm going to do a vertical split. 
Boop. Now I've got another window over here. I can just hide. I can hide this whole thing over here. Um, you hit uh, N for numeric hide. And I can change up here on the top left tells you what the editor window is going to be. So I could take this to be a text editor. I could make notes. I could write a few quick executable codes in there if you wanted to. It could be a compositor, a UV editor, um, the shader editor. Uh, it's got this really big complicated system built in with nodes that allows you to, to make the shaders exactly the way you want it to. You ought to remember that from Unity too if you've gotten into that. Uh, the timeline is the same windows we have down here already. Um, but you might be doing image editing and importing things, but you can make this all whatever you want. I'll right click the break between them and I will join the areas and look at this. So flexible with what you can do with the interface. Okay, I promised you some textures and we'll do that, the uh, materials and we'll do that. We'll hit materials and in the materials, I will just add a new material, it will be a default material. And so I can see what the heck I'm doing. I'm gonna change the viewport up here, you remember we can change the, uh, I'm sorry, the, um, the viewport shading. We can change it to rendered, which shows what, whatever the camera and lights and everything will do. Um, I just want to see the material, so I'll change it to that. Uh, we'll change the base color to red, and we'll make it metallic and specular and not very rough at all, so it gets more and more shiny. We can actually add a second material to our materials, which is a lot of fun. Let me rotate this cube around. Rotate, Z, one, eight, zero. Boop. I rotate it on the Z axis and 180 degrees to flip it towards the camera. Let's go ahead, and in materials, we've already got one material, and I'll just, uh, I'll just rename this one um, shiny red. We'll add another material to this material and we'll make a new one instead of picking out a materials because we've only got the red. Let's med, uh, we'll make a flat, we'll make a flat blue, how about that? We'll take this color, look how easy this is. Boop, there's a color. How metallic? Not very. How specular? Uh, not very. How rough? Very. So now we've got a nice flat blue. We haven't applied it to anything yet, it's just sitting there. If we were to add another another object in here, we could you know, grab that material, boom, flat blue right there. But we can also apply that to individual areas of this model. So we've got it on the model. So that flat blue is already on this model. If I'm in edit mode, I can actually select individual faces where I want it to be. So if I were to select this top one and click flat blue and say assign it, I'll get out of edit mode with that tab key we've talked about, boom. Now I've got that flat blue on top of the rest of the shiny cube. It might make more sense to assign flat blue to the interior of that. And we'll come up here and we'll assign shiny red to the top. So now we've got this cube with a hole cut out of it. Fun stuff. This cube is still very editable. So we can go into edit mode, grab that face, and we can hit that, that uh, move tool, the grab tool, grab it along the Y axis. And instead of being an inset, we can have that punch out like that. So much we can do. We can grab a face and then scale that individual face, probably wreck our geometry in the process. <laughs> I have all these twisted twisted polys in there. Um, anyway, there's so much you can do here, but I hope that, that will give you a really, really, really quick overview of how to work with Blender and kind of get your feet wet and get moving. This is a real lesson one. My objective is that you can get some more lessons later on and do uh, a bit more and understand them. When you're ready to export this model, go up here to File, Export. We want to export the FBX into our Unity folders, wherever the heck that is. And we can say, make sure that you've got the selected objects only. And this is where we can apply our uh, any of those any of those transforms that we've put onto it. Uh, once we've scaled it, Blender is no longer thinking of this as a solid object. It's thinking of it as something scaled. So we kind of need to apply it in advance. So instead of being an object that's scaled at 1111 over here on this right hand side, if you've been scaling it and rotating it, Blender is saying, well, it, it's still that same object, but it's scaled. So in order to export over into Unity better, it says, well, why don't we apply these transforms and just go ahead and reset all of the transforms to be default. Um, we can change Y to up for this X, for, for the uh, left-handed coordinate system that Unity has. There you go. 
we can export that and it will appear into our folders. Um, so I know this is kind of a high level, quick, quick kind of a tutorial, get your feet wet. This is so that you will feel a little bit more comfortable with it, especially when you go to do some other tutorials out there for people who are spending a little bit longer or maybe people who are going too fast. Uh, so this one is meant to take time and give you a chance to get comfortable. I hope this helps you. Uh, if you have any questions, post below. I will try to answer. I might answer with another video if you need it. But anyway, you guys have a great day. Bye.